Hey Ian, what's the magic word? Centripetal. Centripetal? Centripetal force. Centripetal force. That's pretty good, buddy. So we have a project this week, STEM project. It's a carousel. It is a carousel. And this is the requirements that were outlined as far as materials. And then the object is to build a carousel uh, slash merry-go-round. It doesn't have to move, but how cool would it be if it did? Say if it moved around in a circle. So make sure to make seats for a few friends to ride along. Long. Along. And this is probably going to be our, our last project for a while, at least one that was given to us from school. But uh, we, we'll probably come up with our own here in the future as far as STEM projects go. Yeah. But our magic word was centripetal force. Nice. And I wrote the definition down here. It is a force that makes a body follow a curved path. Its direction is always orthogonal to the motion of the body and towards the fixed point of the instantaneous center of curvature of the path. So I put some things out here to the right so we have a better understanding of it. And a lot of this stuff we've learned before, say maths, we learned about maths when we did our boat project, right? Because we had to measure how much our boat weighed and how much water it displaced, and that was somewhat proportional to the mass of the boat, right? Or the mass of the water. What about this one, V? Yeah, V is velocity. We learned about velocity during our bowling alley, right? Mm -hmm. And velocity was basically the rate of speed it took for the bowling ball to get towards the end target, which were the pins, right? Yeah, what's R? R is radius. Radius is a new word. Radius is the measurement between center of a circle to the outside edge of a circle. So from here to here, that measured value, how long it is, the distance would be the radius. What is F? F equals centripetal force, the word we're learning today. And there is a, an algebraic formula for this, or mathematical formula, FC, or centripetal force, equals m, which is your mass, times velocity squared, then divided by or over the radius. So, kind of fairly easy math. And we'll, what, what is the new word is radius or is that? Radius, radius was the center of your circle to the outside edge, the distance. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now we're not going to do the math for this project, but I did want to point out that we've learned a lot of these things before. Yep. However, they did give us examples of of merry-go-rounds, didn't they, or carousels? They look like carousels and merry-go-rounds. Yeah, and we're going to try to build one of our own with some materials. Materials? And so we did a rough diagram of what makes up a carousel. You have the platform, you have your center pole. That is rough, rough, rough. Yeah, super rough. <laughs> yes. From your center pole, if you look at this middle part right here, this is going to be your gearing and your bearing. This is uh, really where, well, uh, where, excuse me, if you have an electric motor or something where your motion is being generated. So over here on the right, we have ring bearing, ring gear. This is called your center hub assembly. And then you have your sweep. This is the upper part where you have your uh, all your material that make different circles. Circles. Yeah. And then from those points, you have your seating platform and seating components. They hang from it, right? Yeah, but Daddy, some get a little wet. Yeah, paper is getting a little wet because of the table. Yeah. And then at the top, you have another bearing. This is called your main bearing. Now, I'm, I believe this right here is potentially free spinning. It's not the point where you're generating motion. Oh. So from this free spinning bearing, you're going to have what's called your sweep or your rods or whatever comes down, your sweep rods, to connect to the uh, center sweep assembly, which is all your uh, circles that are tied to the center hub assembly. Okay? So we've got a rough idea of what we need to make. And then we have some rough components that we're going to use to build this. 
What is this paper for? Well, I'll tell you. This bottom portion is going to be your platform. And then we have some fasteners, some, some bolts and some nuts and some washers. Yeah, well, I'll explain it in a second, Audrey. And Gorilla Glue. We also have some toothpicks. And then for our seats, we have printed out some small pictures of these horses. <laughs> and you, you, Ali, and Audrey will, will color these for us, okay? So essentially, this will become our, our platform. These components will become our center pole and our two bearing assemblies. Uh, as far as our sweep goes, this will be the upper sweep. This will be that top part right here. Oh. Okay, and it will act as kind of a bearing at the same time. I want to color that in markers. Well, we can color in markers. And then our toothpicks will become our uh, sweep rods, yep. as well as the rods that will hold our carousel uh, seating components upwards. Yep. Okay? So, we've got a lot to do, and I think we can do it. However, it's going to be small steps. Are you ready to build this carousel? Yeah. Ali, are you ready to build it too? Yeah. Audrey, are you ready to help out too? I think we're all getting our uh, liquids in to make ourselves prepared, and we'll start this project. Give everybody a thumbs up. Say thumbs up. You almost got it. All right, let's start building. And what's the magic word? Centripetal force. Centripetal force. Then, Can you explain to everybody how we made this? So we colored this. Uh huh. And we put some holes, some more holes. Yeah. And that's why our seats are right here. 
glue and yeah. re glued the top one and glued two nodes together. Yeah, two screws. Yep. Yeah, we did a lot of gluing, didn't we? Yeah. So we made our platform out of a plastic lid. Our center pole were two uh, screws that we used a nut and some super glue to uh, marry together. We used two nuts above and below our uh, sweep. And it's also acting as our bearing as well, right? Even though you know, hindsight 2020, if we were to redo, the, redo this, probably get some ball bearings or something, go a little bit bigger, so we have something that's more free spinning. Uh, we had our main bearing up here, this washer is acting as that. We use toothpicks as our sweep rods for our sweep, and then we use toothpicks to set up our uh, seating platforms, right? And obviously it leans a little bit. We probably could have done a little bit better measuring out the distance from our upper bearing to the sweep with these sweep rods so they were a little more even and will hold this a little bit uh, level with the ground, but that's okay. So overall, did you like this project, Ian? Yep. Yeah, did you like it too, Ollie? How about you, Audrey? Did you like this project? Yeah. Well, it looks like you're trying to play as a rocket. And what was one of the things it said uh, we had to make seats and how cool would it be if it was to move? So, let's see, does this actually move? Yes! It does move. But, but how do we get the man's on here? Uh, we'll have to pretend, okay? But it moves rather nicely. I like that. Do y'all like this? Did y'all yeah. like this project? Yeah. Yes, and he will share it. Give everybody a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. Say, see you later.